Hey, thank you so much for watching. I'm Pippi Peterson. You can connect with me on Patreon, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, as well as my website at pippinings.com where you can get your Righty Row t-shirt. So, I'm going to be changing my transmission fluid in my RV, which I'm sure is pretty old by now and probably not the best of color or quality. The transmission is something that it does just that what its name is, transmits. It transmits power that is created in the engine to be able to turn the wheels on your vehicle. So let's think for example of riding a bicycle. A bicycle has a transmission. Of course not the beach cruisers, they don't have any gears or anything, but a regular like mountain bike has a transmission. So when you start out riding your bicycle on, you know, flat ground, you kind of want the pedals to go a little quicker than your back tire. And that would be kind of an equivalent of underdrive. And then you're going kind of the same speed. You don't want your feet to go like really fast. So then you put it in maybe direct drive. So what your feet are pedaling is the same thing that's pedaling is the same speed that the back tire is going. And then let's say you get some speed and you don't want to, um, you know, you want to slow your feet down a little bit. Otherwise you'd be going extra fast. <laughs> Then you would put it in overdrive where your feet are only going a little bit, but the back tire is going much quicker. So that's the same exact thing that's happening with a transmission on your vehicle, except the gear situation is way more complicated. I mean, like, you know, gear sets and gear sets and gear sets and gear sets. And, uh, uh, pretty intricate thing and because of all those gears and you know turning and stuff you need to have it lubricated and so that's exactly what the transmission fluid does so there's a few reasons why you need to be aware of and changing your transmission fluid one the fluid that is in uh, transmission just naturally deteriorates with time and so that's why manufacturers will give you kind of what they estimate you know normal wear and tear would uh, cause this transmission fluid to last a certain amount of time. So that's why they give you like a milestone. Another reason you need to change your fluid is because there's so many gears moving and parts moving that the, you know, sometimes the metal touches each other and it creates little flakes. So there's graphite that will build up in the fluid. And that is what the fluid filter is for, but it doesn't always get it. And you know, it can over time accumulate more than what the filter can take. And that's why you also need to change the, the transmission filter. So then the other reason is because when you put your engine under stress, it, you know, different parts are moving at different speeds and it's uh, faster. So there's more friction going on on the oil and it heats the oil up. And while you have your vehicle under a stress such as towing or speeding or uh, you know, just being heavy like an RV in general or, you know, trying to race uphill, that puts under stress and it doesn't take very long under those stressful times for the engine to heat up uh, pretty extreme. So when the, when the fluid heats up, it can uh, burn the fluid, which deteriorates it much faster and, you know, parts can burn and you know, it's just a bad situation. So those are the reasons why you do need to change your transmission fluid. So let's get to it. You first want to locate your transmission. The pan will be bolted in several bolts around the perimeter. Since the pan should be removed slowly and evenly at first, it's useful to loosen all the bolts around the perimeter before removing any of them. It'll give you more control when you're ready to let the fluid pour out. When the pan bolts are loosened, you can begin removing the bolts on one side of the pan. To allow it to tip and overflow its contents out one side of the pan, hoping to get most of the fluid in the drip pan below. Slowly loosening the bolts, giving priority to the pouring side. As you begin to fully remove the bolts, keep them in a clean dish of some sort so that they can stay clean and also so that you don't lose them. The fluid level inside the pan will eventually be less than the volume of the pan. At this point, you can remove all the bolts except on one or two in the back to let the remaining fluid pour out slowly. The thin filter will be inside the pan and just pop it out of its slot. Let any remaining fluid drain from there too. Now you're ready to clean the pan. So once you get your pan out, 
you're going to have to do a little bit of cleaning. One, there will be uh, some probably some remaining oil in it, and at the bottom of that oil, you're going to find like some graphite stuff, and that's just you know from like moving parts and gears and things, and uh, so that has to get cleaned out. Plus, you have to remove the gasket, which goes around the side, and sometimes the gasket will stick a little bit to the metal, so you will actually need to use either uh, some sort of scraper for the gasket that's kind of like a big, uh, you know, kind of flat spatula, or you can use something like this. However, this is a little controversial because it's electric and, you know, it's got a little more power, so it could take off more metal than maybe you'd want to take off, so you got to be a little careful if you're going to use an electric one. And uh, you, you can remove and throw away the gasket that's old because when you buy your new filter, it'll come with a new gasket. As you get the pan clean and all the oil out, you'll see at the bottom there's a magnetic pad. This pad's stuck to the pan, and it's a magnet to collect all of the graphite and any bits of loose metal. So you want to make sure that you definitely clean that off. You don't just want to get the front part clean, but also the back because the bolts are going to go along here. There's probably a bunch of oil and debris that's collected, and that'll keep your bolts from sealing flat. So you can use like a degreaser. This one's for uh, brakes. And the great thing about this is it dries quickly. So another reason to get it really clean, you know, and even clean these parts is because it's quite possible that these, you know, will have little leaks in some of your, where some of your bolts go. And uh, this one did because you could see a bunch of uh, oil here and then, you know, debris was sticking to it. So now that it's all clean, when I put this back, if it continues to leak, I'll be able to see easier, you know, which bolt it's leaking at so that it, hopefully I can fix that. Now that it's clean, uh, you can begin to put your, your new gasket back on. However, so normally you would just, you know, use this, but for like high performance or uh, for a little bit extra caution, you can use this special kind of silicone. It's actually f called a gasket maker and uh, it's called RTV silicone and uh, that will get, so like imagine, you know, when you screw it back in. You know your bolts gonna have pressure like right here and it will have a little less pressure in between that and the next bolt so in those spots where there's less pressure or where it might not be perfectly flat anymore that is when the the silicone is going to seal that little extra bit in So now I can lay my gasket down. And get the bolts, bolt holes aligned. And I'll let that sit for just a minute and then I'll put another layer of the RTV silicone on top. While the silicone is drying, I'm gonna come in here and clean uh, this side of where the gasket's going to be and then I can also apply the filter again the new one I've got the gasket and the silicone all ready for the pan to go on. It's clean in there, the filter's been applied, so now I'm ready to just bolt this thing back in. But you definitely need to check and see. Uh, you can Google it, 
you know, you want to know your type of transmission and then Google the specs for which bolts need to go in first because you can't, like you should never go around, you know, do one and the one next to it and go around. You're supposed to do it in a certain pattern so that pressure isn't, you know, pulling things one way or the other. And if you're not exactly sure, you know, uh, what your torque pattern is, as long as you do it evenly, like one on one side, then do another on the other. This pan in particular, you start with one on the bottom or, you know, the, the long side, the, the thin side, and then go up to the other side, and then you just make crosses and that will evenly distribute it. Also, when you find the torque pattern, it'll give you the torque specs so that you know exactly how much to turn your bolts so that they're not too tight and they're not too loose. When you're putting your bolts through, make sure that they are going through the gasket and not possibly pushing the gasket, you know, inside or outside and not going straight through it. All right, so now that I got the pan on and all bolted back in, I'm ready to fill it up with more fluid. If you don't know what kind of fluid to use, you can call the manufacturer. So I've got Fleetwood, I called Fleetwood, and they didn't know because my RV is actually too old, so they referred me to the Fleetwood Heritage Center. And now I can kind of call that Fleetwood Heritage Center number, you know, for any you know, kind of questions that I have here and there, and it's been really helpful. So yeah, anything you don't know, you might have to call a Heritage Center or just the manufacturer directly. I filled it up, I've only put, uh, about seven liters in it takes about 7.7 .7. and I went underneath to check and make sure that there's no leaks <laughs> and so now I'm going to start it up so that uh, to check the level it should be started so I'm check this out here we got Chase on the on the sofa hanging out <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Please check out other content on my channel, which includes topics ranging from RV living, RV renovations, RV maintenance, and a bunch of DIY solar stuff. Also, please like and share this video and leave an awesome comment. Thank you so much.